about this. Coming Saturday, September the 23rd, 2017. Anybody has heard anything? Yeah, I've seen one hand, few hands, yes, no. You also know about September 23rd, end of the world. Let us enjoy this last week on this planet Earth. <laughs> right. <coughs> uh, what is going to happen on September 23rd is a reality. There is something unique that is going to happen and uh, that will be visible in the sky. <coughs> and God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> there is no maybe. <laughs> And there is no, no. It is an empathetic yes. And he made all of this just by his word. <coughs> and a lot of people who follow Bible prophecy and uh, people who are gifted with Bible prophecy. Uh, and there are for and against comments. So I did my homework and it's very important to do that. <coughs> What Bible, uh, few Bible um, prophets or the ones who have the gift of prophecy have ended up saying uh, is that this event is linked to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, his second coming. And in fact, he surely will come. That, that I agree because the only I told in the morning also that if there is one reality that is going to happen in the future, if there is one of the many which we can say with 100% conviction, it is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That is the one and only 100% real instance that is going to happen in the future. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be thousand years from now. And Jesus went on to say, that no one knows about that time. This is Jesus' words. Except the Father. That is Jesus' word. And if Jesus has told that even I am not aware of when I am going to come back, no human being or anybody else can ever give a date. These are all signs that point to his coming. So that is where I disagree. <coughs> there was this huge uh, prophecy around uh, the rare solar eclipse that happened in the US in August. There's a lot out there. And last year there was a lot about the blood moons and there's a lot that's been told. <coughs> All of these have happened and a lot others will happen. <coughs> but then <coughs> we as Bible-believing Christians should be very careful <coughs> when such things come out and look at it in the light of the scripture. And I told in the morning, I spoke from Matthew 25. <coughs> Don't have to look it up. And Matthew 24 is when uh, his uh, disciples come and ask him when this will happen. Because Jesus says that the structure that you're seeing about the temple, he says that no stone will stand one on the other. Everything is going to fall away. So they'll come running to him and they'll say, when is this going to happen? And can you tell us the time of your coming and the end of this age? They ask specific questions. Matthew 24, 3, if you can pull that up on the screen for me. Matthew 24, verse 3. <coughs> we'll quickly get into today's message. <coughs> it's up there for us on the screen it says now as he sat on the mount of olives the disciples came to him privately telling say, saying tell us when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming that is the second coming and of the end of the age two important realities and from verse 4 onwards till the end of the chapter, Jesus explains. In his own words, he talks about the signs. And as he comes to the end of his explanation, he gives a warning in verse 42. 
of 24. See the warning. He says, watch therefore. Whenever the word therefore comes, you have to read the all that was told before. Right? We cannot start from therefore. <laughs> Are you getting it? <laughs> if you start from therefore, there is nothing you and I will understand. So you need to read from verse 1 to 41 and understand. And he says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. And after this explanation, or after his preaching, he goes to two parables in chapter 25 to extend that conversation, to help the disciple understand, and today for us to understand. And the first parable he talks about is the ten virgins. Ten virgins. I told in the morning, in the mornings, I cannot repeat the whole sermon, but there are some similarities. All ten were virgins. All ten wanted to meet the bridegroom. All ten wanted to be a part of that wedding. But five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. The coming of the bridegroom was delayed. Chapter 25, verse 5. Matthew 25, verse 5 is the crucial verse in that chapter. It says, But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Who all? The wise and the foolish. Huh? All of them were virgins. All of them came to meet the bridegroom. All of them slept. Then what is the main difference? Five of them were prepared. Five of them were unprepared. And I told in the morning with that I close. The primary need, please remember this, the primary need of every human being is Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. The most important need of every human being is Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people's primary need is Rodi Kapada Makan. Right? And a lot of people's primary need is now I'm in a two bedroom, I will go to a three bedroom. I have a scooter, I need a car. I am I'm wearing unbranded clothes, I will wear branded clothes. And so on and so forth. You can have all of that, but without Christ, then your priorities are totally wrong. <coughs> your primary need should be Christ. And then, all those who have known Jesus as their Savior, they should be prepared to meet Him. That is what is second coming all about. So now going back to September the 23rd, that is this coming Saturday, what is going to happen in the sky and what Bible prophecy, the way people are interpreting it, they are linking it up to Revelation chapter 12. And I will read those few verses because I will show you one. <coughs> you can show that. Uh, I will read from here. And then we will get into the message. We will look at this in a moment. And this is from the Bible, Revelation 12, verse 1. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with sun. You can dim. You, you see, uh, are you able to see a figure like a woman? Some of you, yes, no? Right? A woman clothed with sun. What is happening to this bus? Yeah, you can see that. Right? This is not working, but you can see sun there, right? That is the first verse. With the moon under her feet. Where is the moon? Here, right? And a crown of 12 stars on the, the 12 star. And there is a lot of description. And... <coughs> The second verse says that she was pregnant and 
cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. So she is pregnant and and virgin. We all know about sun signs, right? Don't tell me. Don't give that innocent look. Like, what is that, Pastor? That is what we used to read in Deccan Chronicle. Every week. Or somebody will send in WhatsApp these days. I don't know. I am the Deccan Chronicle fellow. Right? In this week, you are going to meet the person you have been dreaming for. And there is so much of conviction. Right? And uh, I, am, I was born in September. And so, this is my sun sign. Virgo. There are 12 sun signs. And it is, it is predominantly, <coughs> by the time when each one of us was born, at that point in time, where was the position of the sun? And, and to that extent, it is scientific. <laughs> but what is not scientific is just because of that position and the time that you are born, all these astrologers will come up and say that, ah, because of the timing... Either it is good time or bad time. <coughs> and lot of things happened around that. To that extent, yes. Because that is what is God's creation. Right? So what is being told <coughs> is some of them are telling this is the end of the world. Simple. So those who didn't get, didn't get married, find somebody, get married because you just have six days. <laughs> right? Don't take me for that. <laughs> That is one wrong interpretation. And there is a lot out there. <coughs> and the second one <coughs> is that Jesus definitely is going to come on the 23rd of 2017. As if this fellow went and listened to the heart of the Father. And the, th and the other interpretation is because it says it, it, she, she is pregnant and is crying out to give birth. Antichrist is going to be revealed on the 23rd. That's another interpretation. And when I finished my morning first service message, there was another interpretation somebody told me at the gate. This was like, I said, wow, that is, Jesus will be born again. I said, wow, this is like ultimate. <laughs> I said, he will be born again. Unfortunately, none of this is true. This is once in 7,000 years, a remarkable thing which will be not seen in the near future. It's more about whatever it called the orbit. So this is the orbit. That's no, my physics is bad. My physics is basic physics. Okay? And uh, that's how God has arranged. So all of these are, are coming into a formation. The, the sun, the moon, the earth, and the stars. They are all coming into a formation which is unique. And yes, Revelation 12 speaks about this, yes. And then what is the interpretation? <coughs> Revelation 12, partly, please remember, while it's a huge subject in itself, partly it's about the birth of Lord Jesus Christ the first time when he was born. That is the first part of Revelation 12. And the remaining thing pertains to his second coming. <coughs> and that is more of a sign <coughs> than a surety. <coughs> sign to warn those who are not ready to be ready and those who have known him to prepare themselves and help others prepare and use every opportunity. That is what it is. So I've taken enough time to explain. Only few people raised their hands, so I'm happy. I told this in the morning. Even in the morning, there were few hands. So I said, Bethel is a wonderful congregation. They would not see anything like this. So I, I'm grateful to God. But there's a lot of uh, uh, confusion that is prevailing, and there's a lot. And, and in the next two, three days, you will hear a lot more. But more than anything else, Pray that people will come to know who God is. That they give their lives to Him. Because that is the only reason, as it is written in the Second Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 9, 
if we can pull that up second peter chapter 3 verse 9 if i'm not mistaken yeah it's here the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance that is why he is delaying his coming there is no other reason that he wants as many to come to know him as his savior so when something like this happens satan is even more active to propagate a lot more half truths satan will not say an outright lie then nobody will believe more so god's children will not believe <laughs> so satan gives half lie half truths so that people are deceived <coughs> so let us look at <coughs> from the from the same book of peter first peter fifth chapter eighth verse and we will look at quickly this is the warning be sober be vigilant because your adversary or your enemy the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so the evening's message with the very limited time that we have we will look at what are the tactics or techniques of satan six of them quickly because you we we need to know our enemy if you have to win the war you need to know the enemy enemy strengths and weaknesses and we are in this war we when i say we is all those who have accepted jesus as their personal savior there are a lot of people here and if you have not it is my prayer again to just plead and say commit your life to god almighty surrender completely for he gave his precious life just for you just for me and that is the best thing that we can do <coughs> to surrender completely to say lord you are the god and the lord of my life and i will follow you taking up that cross for you gave your everything for me and for all those who've done that there are a lot out here while so much is happening while there are so many signs that are out there that are pointing that the coming of our lord jesus christ is way too close while nobody has the authority to give a date or time because that is not scriptural but these signs are warnings to tell us that we need to be prepared and make use of every opportunity to testify about our god to live a life that is pleasing to him <clears throat> let us understand the strategy or the techniques or the tactics of the devil who is like a roaring lion <clears throat> six of them quickly first one it is not in any given order but just for us to know our enemy better and if you look at the history of any country during war days or even now it is all about this the kind of efforts every country does to just go and find out and they the the main way they do it is by sending spies and there are still some prisoners of war in pakistan uh and they've been just kept there because pakistani and felt that these guys were spies in their their country and that's a common thing and when there is so much that is written in the scripture we need to understand how our enemy operates <clears throat> so that you guard yourself and you are vigilant putting on the armor of god because there is no peace or truce as they call in this war 
but we are fighting a defeated enemy jesus defeated him on the cross the first one is <coughs> and he makes these attempts if i have to use that word knowing that sometimes he succeeds sometimes he doesn't but he will always attempt to attack god's children one of the one of those attempts of the six is he attempts to discredit the word of god and there's a lot that is happening these days that the word of god is not complete and there is a lot of debate and especially if you watch tv and certain debates there are there are such intense debates pointing out that there are errors in the word of god and that is satanic and you and i should take his word as the written final word of god i am not here to debate i am just here to accept it the way it is and follow what is told in the word so that is the first one and the debate is more around the authority of the word of god that word of god which is dear and precious to us that is being debated it is not only about the authority of the word of god the second one is the accuracy of the word of god as and when translations came people have enough opportunity to pick up lot of such errors if i may have to call and then they project it to people who are feeble in faith who have just come to know the lord or who don't have as much depth and there are so many in the name of jesus who have entered the so called cults i don't want to tell those names from here who are still out there trying to divert or discredit the word of god and the third one is not only there is a debate or discussion and this is to discredit the precious pure word of god heaven and earth will pass away but the word of god will remain the same that is what he told but then satan is out there as a roaring lion operating through people because we are not fighting flesh and blood we are fighting demonic forces and the, and and the debate is all about the authority the accuracy and the acceptability of the word of god do i just take it the way it is and what those who oppose the word of god are doing these days is this is been given thousands of years ago now we are a different generation so bible is not up to date bible is always up to date <laughs> just because you version bible says there is a bible update doesn't mean bible is getting updated <laughs> are you getting it there is no <laughs> it is a software app <laughs> which is telling this version is older but that doesn't mean that bible is what not up to date just because you are updating your mobile bible app are you getting it so that is that is that is one way satan is actively trying to attempt to discredit the word of god <clears throat> one is debating the second one is distorting as i told i will tell again it takes some time for each one of you to understand the context of why what was written and that is the most crucial thing about bible interpretation i spend a lot of time just to get to that context for this one sermon 
I would have spent this whole week. And I just keep referencing, cross-referencing, and reading different commentaries and concordance and so on and so forth. It's a lot of effort. I'm not trying to brag about myself, but then that is important. Certain things are just straightforward. The commands, the principles of the Bible are just straightforward, but all others predominantly have been written to a specific audience at a specific time. After you understand that, you will apply it for now. That is Bible interpretation. <clears throat> and those who don't do this, just take something out of context and present it, and the meaning is distorted. And Satan is smiling. He has succeeded because the word of God convicts and convinces. And the word of God converts. And Satan doesn't want that to happen. So that is his attempt to not only to debate, to distort, and finally the, the word of God is getting diluted these days. Diluted. <coughs> Because people are trying to correct the word of God, which is no power in heaven on earth can correct the word of God. It has to correct us. Yes, no? At least that is for me. The word of God is there to correct us. We are but human. And that is what Satan is trying to do. That is the first one. I spent quite some time... <coughs> The attempt of Satan, <coughs> the attempt of the enemy to discredit the word of God. Second, the other attempt that Satan is actively trying to do is to plant a doubt about the wisdom of God. There are two kinds of wisdom in the Bible. One is wisdom that is pertaining to heaven and the other wisdom is pertaining to this world. Right? And Satan's attempt is about planting a doubt in the minds of God's children that God's wisdom <coughs> is not complete. And he goes about planting seeds of doubt about the promises of God and the precepts are the law or the word of God. And there are, there are so many things that Satan is trying to do. When I, when I talk to people, those who have known the Lord, those who are following the Lord, as they write emails or just call up sometimes and say, a couple of things that I've noted down. When certain things God permits in our lives, or happen otherwise, Satan immediately gets active to plant some negative thoughts about God. If God is loving, if God is real, if God is this, why did this happen? This is one common doubt that comes at different stages in the life of a believer. When a hurricane, which happened, it didn't hit us, it hit a lot of people. When school children end up being involved in a road accident or something, or a drunk person just mouths down a family who are just standing in a bus stop and hundreds of such things. And when we say, you know, that is the sovereign will of God, we don't know what it is, then we say that we just need to accept certain things. There is no explanation. All that Satan would do at that point in time is to create negativity about God himself. Or the thoughts about the purity of God and all that he is. There is this doubt. And especially during the time of Christmas, more so because of this age of the internet. Invariably I see such horrible articles 
about the holy virgin birth of Lord Jesus Christ. Satan is time and again in the business of attacking the purity of God himself. These are few of those things. So that is the second attempt. So we are trying to understand how Satan is operating so that you have the right defense and the offense to go about winning this battle in your mind than anywhere else. It's all about the battle of the mind that is in here. To, to, to discredit the word of God and to doubt the wisdom of God. <clears throat> the third one, and this is a real tragedy. I tell it with a lot of pain. And Satan, if he's been, in, been successful among the six areas, this one is the most successful. I find him to succeed here. The third attempt. The first one is what? Revision time. Discredit the word of God. Doubt the wisdom of God. Third, divide the workers of God. I find it in many places. Divisions within the fellowship. We always think that the attack is going to come from outside. And nowadays, it's RSS is the main enemy. Why? They don't have any other work. Huh? But for us, we are tuned like that. Definitely RSS is behind, behind Christians. BJP is behind Christians. <laughs> Christians are against Christians. Let me tell you that. Well, I'm not trying to defend them because I don't have any ground to say whether that is true or false. We, sh I, we don't want. God is capable. Look at the early church till now. Always the divide came from within. It is not from outside. When I go to different churches, I have, I have seen a clear divide. And there are two, two parties and they say, which party called you? I didn't even know who is that. <laughs> I said, so and so has invited me. If you want me to preach, I will preach or I'll go home. Young people want to be revived. But then there is this group of elders or somebody who are not, some of them within them are not saved. And there is a divide. And these guys are saved and they just want to honor God. And people don't realize. I wanted to Google this and see I didn't have time. <clears throat> but I believe that this is authentic, which happens in the jungles. I believe when uh, buffaloes sense a lion coming and attacking, the moment a buffalo senses, they immediately find other buffaloes and they lock their horns, I believe. Lock their horns and form a circle. And the small little buffaloes, the infant buffaloes, are in the center. And they lock their horns and they are in a circle. So the lion cannot come in and attack the, what? The younger ones. But then, if a male and a female buffalo are locked in horns, I believe, there will be a gap. And when I read that, it taught me a lesson. And the, and, and the lion looks for that gap, I believe. It knows that the buffaloes are locked, their horns are locked, so the lion cannot enter. But then it looks for a gap between those horns. And attacks. And the moment the lion understands that here is that gap, it attacks. And when that happens, these buffaloes just run away and the little ones are left. What is this telling us? That we need to be united. As families, you need to be united together. Otherwise, your children may be attacked, your wife may be attacked. Your husband may be attacked. 
I'm not talking of a physical assault, but a satanic attack. It could be against your health, it could be against your finances, it could be against something else. I don't know. But you've left a gap. And Satan is watching. May there not be any gap between the way you think versus the way somebody else thinks. Within the family, that you all need to think and be in sync with each other. One mind, one heart. When two people agree, that's what God of Word says. Only two people agree. It is husband and wife, it is children and the family, and so on and so forth. Agree and say, Lord, we want you to operate in our lives. You will see victory. Otherwise, there is this attack. <clears throat> and that is the reason. We'll just look at one verse and we'll quickly go to the next three. The high, priest, high priestly prayer of Lord Jesus Christ, which is John 17, before he went on to the cross, that is a lengthy prayer, a beautiful prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples and then for all those who have expressed their faith in him. And in that lengthy prayer, he repeats one thing from verses 21 to 23 of John 17. If we can see that on the screen. John 17, verses 21 to 23. Okay. I will read it for you. Just give me a moment. John 17, verses 21 onwards. This is his prayer, the part of his prayer. <clears throat> that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to, brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me that they may be one, that they may be one, as you and I are one. But Satan wants divide. Within family members, within relatives, within fellowships, within friends, and so on and so forth. So that is his attempt, the third attempt. Fourth one is deadness in worship. That doesn't happen in Bethel for sure. And I praise God. And whoever enters in, whether it is English service or Telugu service, there is one common testimony that, that I hear and I just praise God. They say, those who have come for the first time or participate in our service, they say, there is something different here. We can feel the presence of God. That's like, that is the best testimony that I can hear. It's not about Peter Anna, Pastor Peter Samuel, the people out there. No. If, it's, if, that is, if it is anything around that, it's not worth it. But people who come here can testify saying that, yes, we can experience the presence of God, the movement of God. My heart rejoices and that should continue till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But there are so many fellowships, I don't want to name them, churches, where when you enter, you know they are spiritually dead. There is singing, there is prayer, there is preaching, but it is not touching hearts. It's become a routine, it's become a ritual, it's become a celebration, and so on and so forth. And you need to pray. In the afternoon, a couple of our youth were showing some video. I don't know how genuine it is, after which it was removed. It was about a young preacher, a most happening preacher in Andhra. And uh, the video claims that this person actually was with his friends, drinking and all of that. That was like horrifying. 
I don't want to judge anybody. Later, uh, his, his post says that, you know, I was trying to record my uh, life story because of which this was taken, this is not true and things like that. But the damage has been done. So are you getting the point? Please remember, irrespective of whatever level your faith is, Satan would want to just trap you and me. You don't have to be a big preacher, nothing. Satan knows you and I can make an impact for Christ wherever we are. Please remember. And if you are the only person in your organization, Satan knows that you are that small little light but powerful light. <laughs> and Satan will try to implicate you. So be firm and be strong. Don't just take things for granted. Be careful. Because he will find ways to attack. Because when a child of God is attacked, whose name is at stake? It is his name. <laughs> the publicity will all about, see, <laughs> these kind of preachers, these are Christians, these are Christian pastors, this is their God. So that is what will come out. And it's a huge disgrace. And Satan is more than active in these end days because he knows his time is getting closer. Ah! He knows the day Jesus comes back, his time is just limited. And he is doing anything and everything that is possible. So please be careful. So it is about worshipping God with all our heart and with all our strength and with all our mind, with all our love towards him. Worship that is alive. A worship that is led by the Spirit. That is the fourth one. The fifth one, <coughs> I've come to the end. What is the attempt of Satan against the children of God? Is to be disloyal to the work of God. Even this is being seen these days, unfortunately, among uh, Christian workers. I'm not generalizing, pardon me, don't mistake me for what I said. But there are places where dishonesty is just out there. There are churches where the offering is being split among uh, the people who are running that fellowship. That is, I, I just pray and I say, Lord, just may your grace and mercy continue to be there. The fear of God is missing among the hearts of people. Those who are serving the Lord, those who are proclaiming about God, the fear of God is missing. And they are not loyal to the work of God. You and I are called to be his workers. And we need to understand our call and we need to be loyal to our calling. Absolutely. And when I say loyal, at least be loyal to studying the word of God. That is one basic thing God expects us. At least Read the word every day. <laughs> well, that's a basic requirement. That is loyalty. Every day, open his word. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Then start studying it. But if you don't even read the word of God, Satan will be the most happy person. Because the moment you open the word of God, that will shiver. <laughs> and that is where the loyalty is being hit. And the second one is serving. <laughs> You need to study the word of God. Then you need to serve the word of God. And then you need to pray. These are the three basic things. While there could be so many others. For every child of God, 
what is being loyal to the work of god is to study his word and to obey obviously and to pray and to serve wherever he's kept us that is what you and i are called for when you hear about something it should be a natural response for you to immediately pray one minute two minute five minutes i don't know some whatsapp message comes in one group or somebody calls or you hear about something it should be a natural response that you utter a word of prayer of the many prayers that i do one thing that comes spontaneously to me is when i'm driving i hear the siren of an ambulance immediately i pray for whoever is i don't know who they are nothing but with all sincerity i say lord i don't know what is the state of the person but that siren tells me that that's an emergency may they find favor and may your will be done or at that point in time whatever it is that is one of the many so i'm not telling now you start praying if if it helps you do pray there's nothing wrong there is one lady who used to open the newspaper every day and look at the births and the deaths because whoever you know kind of puts it out in the paper so and so's birthday and so and so has passed away and she prays for both those families for those who have lost their dear she prays for the comfort of the family she doesn't know who they are and for the person who is born she prays that lord this person should come to know you as their god so what i'm trying to say is there are hundreds and thousands of ways for you to pray for others these are just two examples of the hundreds of ways because prayer is the most powerful thing people don't change through preaching but through prayer and this generation has forgotten the power of power of prayer and is that that is one thing that you and i can do even till the last moment of our very breath <clears throat> even if this whole body is paralyzed we can still pray and that is the greatest ministry so we should be loyal to the scripture to our service and towards praying or supplication the last one is satan will attempt to distract us from the way of god last one distract showing this world <laughs> the pleasures that is why paul writes is about demas he wants he says demas has loved this world and he has left me and went away the pleasures the treasures of this world while you are pursuing the way of god satan's attempt is to distract you and me from the way of god i was there when i was a youngster 8 to 9 years i moved away a backslidden life lost everything including my dad and then i came back again grace of god god didn't give up on me and i just praise god but nobody will ever give me back those 8 or 9 years that young age i came to know the lord when i was 18 19 years old but i came to serve the lord when i was 29 that is your pastor a very bad example absolutely bad example of living a backslidden life so i know the pain of what it means to crucify god each day i can blame all of this that we meditated or so many other things but end of the day it's our personal choice So the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is way too close. The question is, are you prepared? The question is, are you really ready to take up that opportunity that comes your way and testify about who He is, and also be ready now that you know how Satan. 
is attempting to do all this and don't fall prey to that trap of Satan. Let us pray. Take a moment to just introspect your very life where you are today in your relationship with God. Whether you have that relationship or not is the first question. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, not emotionally, But God the Holy Spirit has convicted you and you opened your heart and said, Lord, come in. Then you are his child and you praise God for that blessed relationship. How strong is your fellowship with him? And don't let Satan succeed in his attempts. Say, Lord, I'll be vigilant. I'll be sober. I'll be watchful. And commit yourself for a life of surrender. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise and honor and bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your precious word as you always do. May we not be just hearers of the word, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.